Good morning. Today is 12 October, the year 2007. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in California. Part of our mission is to record and preserve the history of our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in those conflicts. Today, I'm here at the museum with special guests, Mary Beth Ebert and Chris Ebert and Mary Castleberry. And today, we have the honor and the privilege of learning about Lieutenant Joel Castleberry. Lieutenant Castleberry was a PBY pilot in the Aleutians during World War II, flying part of the time in the very PBY we have here at the Air Museum. So now we're gonna to talk to his family. Uh, Mary is his wife, and Mary Beth is uh, his first eldest daughter, and, uh, and her husband, Chris. And um, unfortunately, uh, Joe passed away in year 2001, so uh, we will not be able to interview him, but we're gonna learn a lot of stuff about him from these nice folks. So nice to have you all here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, first of all, whoever wants to, uh, would you please uh, repeat and spell Joe's full name for us, please? J O E P period Castleberry C A S T L E B E R R Y. Okay. And junior grade. Yes. And when and where was he born? He was born in Longview, Texas, in 1922, September 27th. Okay. And. Um, Longview, Texas. Now, where is that? That's in East Texas. Okay. Uh, East Texas, that would be near in the Houston no, area? No, that would be up in North, 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 no, North, okay. Northeast. North, Northeast Texas. Texas. Okay. And um, what was his father's name? His, my father's name was Herman Castleberry. And what did he do? He was an oil man. Okay. Uh, what, a particular oil company or anything like that? No, he had oil wells on his property. I see. And um, and how did he end up in Texas? His uh, great his grandfather came with uh, two thousand dollars in gold coins and a bag, and he came into East Texas with that and bought land in East Texas, um, and later oil was discovered on it. About about when would that have been? I think you know I don't know the okay. date he came. In. Okay. And um, his mother's name was Amy Castleberry, and she came from Durant, Oklahoma. Okay. And uh, the Castleberry family, uh, did they come from uh, Europe a long time ago, or do you know or anything about that? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I think they came from Pennsyl Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, and that's as far back as I know about them. Okay. And um, did he have any brothers and sisters? Yes, he had one sister and one brother. And what were they? Amy, Amy Lee Casper was his sister, and uh, James Casper was his brother. Are they alive? Today? No, both okay. of them are deceased. Okay, and um, so did he live uh, in town or out in the country? Or? He lived out in the country. They had a place in the country. How many acres did they have, do you know? My part of it is... Anybody else 260. wants it? 260. 260 acres. That's a, like a section or something like that. Yes, it is. And um, so they had oil on the property? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did they raise other cattle or anything else or grain or anything? Maybe a cow or two. <laughs> cattle grazed. Yeah, grazed, yeah. Um, and right on the Sabine River. Okay. Now, he probably grew up during the Depression. What was that like for the family? They were prosperous. Because of the oil? Yes. Okay. They didn't know about the Depression. I had to tell Joe about the Depression. Because <laughs> I lived in Kansas during the Depression, and we were depressed. Well, let's talk about you for a little bit I, now. Um, uh, well, first of all, when did you and Joe get married? In 43. In 43. Okay. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get up to, to that point. But let's talk about your background a little bit. What was your maiden name? Mary Scott. Okay, and your mom and dad, what were their names? Their name was Frank Scott and Francis Scott. And uh, Oklahoma, is that where you? Or? Kansas. And Kansas, yeah. What, what part of Kansas? I, we lived all over Kansas. My dad uh, 
was the manager of an uh, oil well supply store, and they moved him all over Kansas. Okay. And um, uh, did, he, did you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I have, I'm one of uh, six children. Okay. Uh, and their names? And their name. Tom Scott, my brother. He's deceased. And uh, Patty, Patricia, lives in Houston. And, and Betty is deceased. And Margaret is deceased. And Harriet lives in Fort Worth with me. Oh, okay. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay. <laughs> a spunk, a spunky voice. All right. But they're video recording this. Okay. Now, um, so so how um, did, uh, did we get all your brothers and sisters' names mm -hmm. yet? No, we didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, uh, how many are still alive? Three are still alive. Okay. And um, so. When you, well, where did you go to school? I went, I just finished high school in Kilgore. Kilgore? Mm -hmm. In? Texas. Texas, Texas I thought. So how did, how did you end up in Texas then? From My Kansas? dad managed the store there. In Kilgore? The Kilgore Rangerettes? Yeah, I wasn't one of them. You weren't one? <laughs> I bet you could have been if you'd have really tried. <laughs> yeah, I remember them. Yeah, they always performed this cotton bowl, didn't they? Yes. <laughs> and, um, was um, uh, football's always been big in Texas? Was it oh, when yes. you were there too? Oh yes. Yeah. Did your high school have a good football team when you were there? I Did your high school have a good football team while you? Oh were there? no, oh. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the rest was that a, a junior college? Uh, Kilgore Junior College. Yeah. Okay. And um, what did you kids do? Well, you said you had kind of a tough time during the depression. Let's talk about that a little bit. Oh. How many schools you went to, Mom? I went to 18 different schools before I got out of high school. My gosh. Because <laughs> my dad moved around yeah, so, much. so much. Yeah. And uh, we were very depressed. <laughs> they went from oil field to oil field, didn't they? The, the supply store. The supply store. It was direct a supply. That was where my dad worked for. And uh, they moved them all over the state. And um, what did your kids do for fun? Oh, we had a ball. We had a ball. <laughs> we were very creative. Oh, we, we built shacks and, <laughs> and we played football. Yeah. We, we had a good time. We had a. I had a very happy childhood, although we yeah. didn't have enough to wear clothes to keep us warm. <laughs> I remember that. In contrast, my grand, my father had a pony and a horse. Was much more privileged. Oh, and much more. He didn't know there were. <laughs> and he drew, he had a car before he had a driver's license. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and uh, so he lived. How how uh, far outside of Longview did he live? Five miles. About About five, five miles. miles. Mm -hmm. And Longview, what what was the population then and now? About ten thousand. Still about the same? No, it's it's grown. It's much grown. Larger. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, what year did you graduate from high school then? 42. In 42. And Joe, uh, where did he go to high school? He went to uh, Longview. Long, Long, Long Longview. Long did he play sports in school? Yes, he was a track star. He was a big track star. Really? One of the blue ribbons. Right. And running? He was a runner. Oh. Joe was always a runner. Short, short, short or long races? Both. Both. He, uh, he logged 7,000 miles on, on the Fort Worth Trail. What's the Fort Worth Trail? On, on the Trinity Trail. Where we, we would, he would go. We'd go about four miles every day. But, but what, what was it? What, 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 a jogging oh, trail. Oh, oh, jogging trail. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, okay. And, um, he was very analytical. So after he retired, he would reco record the, the distance he had run that day. He did all kinds of interesting graphs. <laughs> and where did you guys meet? We met the summer of 42. Okay, well, okay, l let's back up just a little bit then. Um, do you remember what you were doing on December 7th, 1941? I was outside the Kilgore Drugstore with a bunch of soldiers. <laughs> 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 and they were a little bit nervous. Yeah. 
Um, they knew they had to report back to base. And what was the base there? It was just, just a, an army base? base? Close to the base. Okay. And uh, what did you think about that? Had you been... Uh, I was very concerned. Mm -hmm. And you were still in high school? Yes. Um, and I suppose a lot of your classmates are, you knew that went away to school. Did yes. any of them not come back? Right. I did not come back. How many? I don't uh, oh, know. but there were several. Okay. And uh, did Joe ever say what he was doing when he first found out about? Uh, he never did say. Okay. No. And what year did he graduate from high school? Would have been. 1939. 39. So what did he do after graduation? Went to Texas A&M, mm -hmm. uh, aeronautical engineering major. Oh, okay. And that's where he was when he decided he was needed elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he um, did he join the he joined the Navy then yes. pretty much right away. Mm -hmm. Officer candidates. Right. And being at Texas A&M, he had a little military background. Uh, is it kind of at a that military point, school? Was in that it? in the Corps, Mom? No, no, uh, he wasn't at that. Point. Not in the Corps. Um, so do we know where he went to, uh, to for his training, basic training? He's Pensacola. Pensacola, okay. That's, that's where he decided he wanted to fly PBY. He, uh, right away. Uh, had he been interested in aviation when he was younger? Oh, yes. He was an aeronautical engineering well, major at AM. Yeah. Two years into that. Uh huh. And then from Pensacola, he went to Whidbey. Whidbey Island. Yes, Whidbey Island. So in Washington? Right, in yeah. Washington. Uh huh. And now, by the time you, now, oh, so, so let's get back to where did you where did you actually meet him? It was a blind date, wasn't it? It was Mom? a blind date. Mm -hmm. Where in Kilgore? Kilgore. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what was you doing in Kilgore? It was very close to Longview. Oh, Little it. tiny oh, towns, they're close very by. close to one Little another. <laughs> I see. So he was home on leave or something like that. No, or, or, it was prior to his. Oh, her. Oh, before he he, he went in. I see. And. Um, so, and when when you got married in '43, did you say? Yes. Was that before he went overseas? Then. Yes. I've always, it, it, you, well, in the movies, you, you no. see, you know, should we get married? Should we not? Maybe I won't come home. Oh, did you guys go through that? Yes, we did. And we decided when he was in the Aleutians that if he ever got back, we never would be apart again, and we weren't. For the next 68 years. Yeah. And uh, where did you get married? Uh, we got married in New Orleans. Uh huh. Oh, it's in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Tell about the cab driver. Yeah. Oh, the cab driver. <laughs> cab driver was our witness. <laughs> yeah. All visitors. We'll take it. Buddy Rogers Theater. Um. So, uh, so what did you do uh, while he was overseas? I stayed with my mother and daddy, and uh, Joe's mother and daddy. Did, did you work or something? No, no. Okay. no. Well, I was born during yeah. that time. Oh, okay. I was pregnant with Mary Beth. Oh, you were. Oh, okay. She, she was six months old before Joe got back. Guys. And the illusions. What do you, I, obviously, when he came back, do you remember her reaction? She immediately loved him, adored him, and the first thing she said was, Dad, Dad. Oh. She did, never mentioned my name. <laughs> <laughs> he was gone all this time, <laughs> and the first thing. But you, you probably talked about him a lot, oh, so yes. she probably, that's so, all she heard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's up in Whidbey now. Let's see, we were at Whidbey. Um, and um, did he say, did flying come easy to him? Mm -hmm. It was a natural The PBY, well, we got a picture of it here, and of course it's right in the background. Let's talk a little bit about that. What do you know about that plane? I know the first time I got acquainted with the PBY was when he flew it over the farmhouse we were living in. Really? <laughs> he buzzed it, and it cut <laughs> his prop pitch just as he got over the house <laughs> and rattled all the windows in the house. And we were out all, all we were in an old farmhouse and we lived with a bunch of Navy personnel. And uh, all of us were, uh, the Navy wives, 
her out in the yard, waving her arms, <laughs> laughing, you know. And uh, this was that? in Oak Harbor, Washington. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that plane, I thought, boy, that's some plane. Yeah. And the landlady said, don't let him do that again. <laughs> he listened to my windows. <laughs> It's quite a large airplane. I mean, you yes. don't until you really actually ride by. Vibrated the house when it went over, and he was low. He was low, very low. Not as low as this, but almost. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I remember the verb my dad used to use was uh, laborious or uh, yes, lumbering. Oh yeah, uh -huh. it's it so didn't slow. go very. It didn't go very fast because uh, it was so. It was filled with so much fuel to go out over the water. Yeah. But it had a big wingspan and stuff, so it was yes. probably relatively and this easy part, to fly. Uh, had pontoons that yeah. swung down to uh -huh. land on the water. Yeah. Did he talk about it, the difficulty of landing on the? I mean, you think about landing in lagoons and, and lakes and things, but out in the sea, if out you have to, sea, that's pretty it's very tough. Rough. They picked up a pilot one time. They had air search rescue, mm -hmm. and they picked up a pilot off one of the islands. Said he had his, uh, what was he in? It wasn't a PBY. No, he, he had landed off the, the coast of this small island. Uh -huh. And uh, this was the, the rescue that the, the crew received a commendation. Oh. And anyway, they picked this guy up, and of course, he was soaking wet, and it was freezing weather. And they got him in the plane, and two of the crew members took off their clothes, and they took the wet clothes off the pilot they had rescued, and got in two sleeping bags and zipped them up. And these crew members kept him from having hypothermia. Mm -hmm. So when the pilot got back, he just had to spend one night in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, that's great. So they got, I'm sure they got accommodation yes. for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, after, after, when we finish, we'll kind of walk around the plane and get some shots of it, and we can talk about it. Maybe even go inside with the camera. We went inside yesterday. Did you? Yeah. We loved it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was surprised I could get through it. <laughs> okay, um, so when did he go overseas then? He went overseas on about April of 44. Okay, and went straight to the Aleutians, did he? Yes, straight. Well, he went to ADAC first. Okay, and uh, so we had a PBY base there, I guess. Uh, any other personnel there? Any other army? Uh, you know, anybody? I don't know much about ADAC. Yeah. But mostly it was on that too. That too. Mm -hmm. And what, do you, what was there? And that, they had a base. They, they okay. They had a base there. And do you know how many PBYs they had there? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Matt was telling us yesterday there were 55 officers and 90 something uh, enlisted oh, men. On Navy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to him the other day a little bit about it, and I guess they they didn't all fly the same plane every time. They kind of right. rotated through, and, right. and so there's a lot of guys that apparently flew this plane, but yes. uh, but it's really special that uh, that Joe did. Yeah. Yeah, Matt has a list of the, of the aircraft, the serial numbers of the aircraft that were on the island at the time Joe was Yeah, there. right. And... Uh, um, did you write back and forth quite a bit? Write letters? Every day. <laughs> and I've still got every letter. Do you, you really? That's the other thing is that in addition, okay, I'm, I'll make a DVD for you and make as many as you want. We'll, we'll talk about that and then we'll eventually transcribe this. Uh, or you can transcribe it yourself if you want to and put it in print form. I don't know if they showed you upstairs how we have it on the library in print. So if you have any letters that we can make copies of or photographs of him back in those days or both oh, of you, okay. stuff we, like that. Sent Matt those you, all that, okay, well, we'll, we'll add all that to it now. Well. Okay, that's great, that's great. Tell them about the method you guys use to write one another's oh. <laughs> letters. <laughs> oh, we had a code, we had a code where he could tell me where he was <laughs> during the war. And I, I noticed she never divulges the code. <laughs> she just told us the head. And one. nobody ever broke that code. Nobody, <laughs> even including the Navy. But the he, letters are filled with... They were with, highly censored. Where they cut stuff cut, out. Stuff cut out. He yeah. would start telling me about something and then 
can be all cut out. Yeah. Highly censored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, did, how many, uh, do we know how many missions that he flew when he was no. up there? Quite a few Daddy argument. was very private, and he just did not ever talk about this. He was 21 and 22 during his experience, mm -hmm. right in the middle of his college time. Yeah. Um, I think he was pretty traumatized, and uh, he, did he, he have any? Did not give us any details, and we respected that sure. privacy. He, uh, he he really did. After the war, he wanted to forget about that and get on with his yeah. life. I think it's the way most guys were that came back. Yeah, they did. Did um, did he make any good friends up there? Oh yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, uh, did he keep in contact with any of them after the after the? Carl. Carl Orkin was one of them, and his wife Peggy. Uh huh. And uh, housing was very uh, rare up there on the island, and. Uh, like we lived in an old farmhouse. This is on Whitby. On Whitby. Yeah. And the orchids lived in an old store in O'Connor. And the old storefront, Peggy had to make drapes to go across the front windows <laughs> of the old, for privacy in the old storefront. But we were just so glad to be together, you know, that was the main thing. Oh, yeah. um, did he talk any about any other missions other than the one where he picked? They picked the. Okay, so they were just, as far as you know, just. They were flying and they yeah. was gold. And yeah. How about um, uh, missions were 12 hours long mm -hmm. and they were usually going west out uh, across the Pacific, uh, oh. search and rescue off the coast of Japan. Rough. Yes, off the and coast of Russia. exactly. And once, well, more than once, <laughs> we only heard about it once. Uh, they were fired upon. And, oh, and, they were? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Russians fired upon. Yes. Oh. Um, in this plane. In that plane? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. From uh, other planes from or from the ground? On the coast. I mean, it was anti aircraft fire? Yes, anti aircraft, exactly. Mm -hmm. They had gone up trying to pick up a couple of pilots. B 52 pilots, I think, that are down on the Russian coast. B 29, uh, probably. Yeah. B 29. Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. But he said they, they didn't experience much success with rescue because the waters were so cold and rough, and rough, and that or the sharks had already oh, reached yeah. the guys who crashed. Yeah. Um, and do, when did he come back home? He came back December night, December night, December twenty fifth, nineteen forty four. <laughs> He was up there nine months. Nine months. Mm -hmm. So he came back on Christmas? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. It was a wonderful Christmas. Yeah, I bet it was, yeah. And so then... And then we immediately went back to, to Whidbey Island. Okay. Where he started training again to go back up there again. Mm -hmm. And when he finished his training, the war ended. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to... So you're back on Whidbey. And, um, do you remember... Um, when you heard about the atomic bomb being dropped, when yes. you first heard about that, what did we were? We had gone back to Seattle. The Navy was just the Navy knew something was going to happen, and they wouldn't tell the boys anything. But they were making up things for them to do. Like Joe was in Seattle taking swimming lessons, <laughs> <laughs> which he didn't need <laughs> when the war ended. And he was out in the middle of a swimming pool when they announced the end of the war. I'll be done. And he was overjoyed. I of course, so. I was down there with him. And, yeah. And, uh, and so you had one child at that point? By that time, Mary Beth was born. Now. Yeah. Okay. She was, she was what, seven, seven months old. Mm -hmm. And so when did he depart from the service? He departed. Yeah. You know, I don't have the actual departure days. Would have been fairly soon after the yes. war was over then. Yes. Yeah. And did he go back to A&M? Mm -hmm. okay. Finished his, finished his uh, degree uh -huh. in aeronautical engineering and he went on to design parts for airplanes at GD. And it was named, what was it named then? Then it was consolidated. It went from consolidated to Convair. Right. And then to General Dynamics all within oh, the span of his, yeah. of his tenure there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Consolidated, I think, built the Liberator, among and others. And Consolidated built this one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which I thought was an interesting. Yeah. Um, and that's a college station, is where AM is? Yes. Where did you live? Did you live on campus or where? Yes, we lived <laughs> off campus in an aluminum barracks. <laughs> and that was a housing for students. And we were married on, students. Married students. And we went back on the GI Bill on $90 a month. And we had, we had saved $4,000 during the war, which helped us get through college. And, and very few had <laughs> saved that because I had no expenses living with my folks. And yeah. and my oh, okay. In laws. My grandparents in Longview found out that they had no refrigerator, but they had a baby. Mm -hmm. And they bought them a refrigerator and had it sit down and they were the only family in, in the, the barracks, barracks with a refrigerator so yeah. everyone put their milk in it. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, did you say he was in the Corps? No. They, no, he was never in the Corps. Never. Okay. Yeah. But Dave, think about, here were these aeronautical engineers who uh, were A, mature men, B, um, uh, they were veterans, and now they were studying to get the credentials for probably the information they already knew. You're right. <laughs> and uh, those would have been really strong students. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they really tested the faculty too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and felt strongly about uh, questioning them and all of that. Oh, yeah. Pretty and they were very, still very patriotic. <laughs> yeah. Did you take any classes where no, you No, I had two children at that time. <laughs> By that time, we had a boy and a girl. Okay, um, how many children did you have? I had four. I had two more later on. And, okay, what what I, was the kid? What were their all their names? Their names. My children's names were Mary Elizabeth. She's Mary Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. We call her Mary Beth. Right. And Joe Pat was next. My son named after Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jack was the. And I had two families. I had the first one very young in the second family 20 years later. Oh. And <laughs> I had a boy and a girl 20 years later, and Amy was a baby. Okay. And um, uh, where does where do all the kids live these days? Okay, Joe Pat lives in Houston. And uh, he's uh, he is president of uh, Fugro, uh, Geotechnical. Fugro Geotechnical. And uh, Mary Beth is uh, with the um, Modern, Art Modern, Art, yes. Modern Art Museum in oh. Fort Worth, mm -hmm. and she is a, what is your title? <laughs> I'm a manager of retail. Yeah, okay, remember the manager of retail. And Amy is no, not employed, and Jack is deceased. Oh, okay, and Chris, what does Chris do? <laughs> uh, Chris is retired. He's retired, <laughs> before he retired, what did he do? Before he retired, he worked in the hall. Oh, really? Oh, my. Well, that's, you've got some stories to tell about that, I'm sure. <laughs> Were you in the service, too, Chris? Uh, yes, I defended Mesquite during the big war. <laughs> Mesquite, Texas. Oh, Mesquite, Texas. <laughs> I was an Army Reserve then, a dental Army Reserve. Dental? Oh, okay. Well, I'm a dentist, by the way. Oh, well, very <laughs> so. good. Well, you know, I know mesial, distal. Oh, you got basically. all that. You got all that. Lingual. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, so. And... Um, so, after he graduated, then what where did you guys do? After he graduated, what was your first thing? Oh, Joe went out recruiting to recruit for a job, and I went with him, because we were to never be a party. <laughs> yes. And I went with him, and uh, he let me pick where he, I liked it, and I put work, I thought was the friendliest town, mm -hmm. and I picked it of all, all the places, so he's... So how did you live there for? A, I still. You still okay? You live in Fort Worth. Still okay. in, in Fort Worth. Okay. Living in the same house for fifty, what, fifty-six years, seventy and years. Okay. What's the address of that house? Five thousand eight Glade Street, Fort Worth, Texas. Is it um, what part of? How large is Fort Worth, by the way? What is it? A million. Uh, Forty thousand. Yes. Four hundred thousand. And uh, TCU is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and. Uh, so that would have been, what year did you go to Fort Worth then? In 48. 48. 48, okay. And um, so, and he worked, who did he work for? He worked for GD. Okay. 
General Dynamic. General Dynamic. Yes. So All it was consolidated. They, call, they it. called it the bomber plant back there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. And um, th what kind of a neighborhood was that that you lived in? I lived in a small neighborhood to oh, yeah. begin with. <laughs> we bought our first home then. Remember how much you paid for that first we home? We paid fifty-six hundred dollars for it. <laughs> and then we bought another house where is where we still live. And uh, we, what we pay for that? Six, Fifteen sixteen, thousand. Sixteen. Sixteen. Thousand Inflation. <laughs> and, uh, of course, now it's about, you know, it's so much. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Mary Beth, what was it like growing up in that neighborhood? It was very nice. Um, it, it's River Oaks is a, a, a part of Fort Worth. It's on the northwest side of town. Uh, the trickiest part was that we were in Castleberry Independent School District, which distant cousins had <laughs> provided water for the well of the first uh, uh, first school, so they named the district after them. And so during my my school tenure, it was no, not not your school. What's your name? Or no, not <laughs> yeah. your name. What's your school? You know. And so there was this this uh, unbalance, but. Uh, it was very nurturing, and we were there the whole time. <laughs> and Mother always kept telling us how she'd been in 18 different schools, you know, <laughs> and we were going to be in the same school. <laughs> oh, that was my goal. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy served on the school board. Mm -hmm. uh, they, my folks were instrumental in getting a high school to the district. Mm -hmm. um, he was president of the Community Service League, which headed that up, and we got the high school. I meant to ask you too, were you guys, uh, well, when you were younger and, and then when you were older, religious? Did you go to school, uh, yes, church a lot? We went to John Knox Presbyterian Church, and I taught Sunday school there for 26 years. Joe was an elder, and later he was a deacon first, and later an elder. And we went there, we went there, we went there all our lives. Was the church pretty close to your house? Uh -huh. And uh, Mary Beth, what was it? Uh, uh, what did you kids do for fun when you were growing up? Well, we were sort of in a rural setting. There were uh, behind our home, and our home was because our home was fairly new. There was still more construction going on around us, and we'd go out and and uh, harvest scraps of wood, and we built things. And Mary Beth built a playhouse out of scraps from from the piles yeah. from the new construction and there were streams and you cra caught crawdads and of course you took piano lessons and dance class and and all that kind of thing but uh, uh, Fort Worth generally is uh, um, it's a very strong very friendly very friendly mm -hmm. place to live that's what that's what impressed me with it yeah. the very first time I was in it how friendly people were. Even even Neiman Marcus, <laughs> the clerks are friendly. Yeah. And uh, uh, where did you go to grammar school? Um, Castleberry Elementary. Okay. And high school? And Castleberry High School. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you see my problem. <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, well, I should ask you too. Um, any favorite teachers? Do you remember when you were in high school? Yes. In my high school. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a PE teacher named Reagan that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I had an art teacher also named Hutchins that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I had some very strong teachers. And I went to school in Kansas until the last two years of high school, yeah. which I went to Texas. And how about you, Mary Beth? You remember any of your teachers? Oh, yes. you like? Doris Dow was yes. pivotal. Uh, Rachel Pierce. What did they teach? Uh, they both were home economists. Mm -hmm. uh, English teacher Thelma Reynolds. Um, she was married to a vet, lived in Weatherford. Um, we had an amazing a cappella choir at the high school. Charles Duke took care of that. And there were some strong administrators. Mm -hmm. And it, it was what did you do after you graduated from high school? I uh, got my uh, M uh, BS at North Texas in home economics, Ed, and then my master's degree from Texas Women's in consumer science. Mm -hmm. And uh, I taught at both Tarrant College and TCU, and then uh, a 
my friend recruited me to the museum, mm -hmm. and I've worked there for um, going on 14 years. Yeah. And you still do that? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, how many children do you have? I have five right five. now. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I have two. I have oh. five grandkids. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. oh um, I have wow. two daughters. One lives in London and one lives in uh, Fort Worth. London, like England? Yes, yes, oh. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> She's married to a British banker and oh, they have okay. two sweet kids. And um, then uh, my daughter in Fort Worth is about to have her fourth. Oh, okay. Yes. Congratulations. And she's very, and her daughter is very generous with the children. They bring them over, and we have slumber parties. Ah. <laughs> and uh, have, have, just have a ball and have her darling. So, Mary, how many grandchildren and great-grandchildren do you have? I have seven grandchildren. Five. I have seven. Yes. And uh, I'm in great. Five. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> and they, a lot of them live fairly close to you? Maribeth's children yeah, are right. close by. Yeah. Joe Pat's in Houston, of course, and his mm -hmm. daughter's in Chicago, but they're too. So I, get, I haven't <laughs> seen them as often. And Joe, um, did he have uh, hobbies like sports? Did he play golf or mm -hmm. stuff he like that? He was an avid golfer. Uh -huh. where, did, where did he play? Uh, he played at Rockwood Golf Forward. Municipal courses. Yeah. But he loved to run, and we have some really pretty uh, jogging trails along the Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, and we go walking it every day. Uh, we walk four miles a day every day. Uh, and mostly we visited. That's where I got back a lot of history that, about my, you know, the PBY and the war mm -hmm. while we walked on those trails. Mm -hmm. He would tell me things that that he hadn't told me all through the years, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just talked and, <laughs> and yeah. he told me yeah. how it was. Uh -huh. um, and how about you? Did you have any hobbies? Uh, I, I was an artist. Oh, really? Uh -huh. still what kind art. of? Uh, still, <laughs> still art. What? What? Art, what, <laughs> what? What are you? What's your? What you, pictures mostly. Oh, really? You done any of her? Mm -hmm. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> You still do it then, huh? Yeah. Not as much as I used to. Yeah. Well, after Daddy retired, uh, and he worked this one place for all of his professional tenure, uh, they traveled a great deal. We bought a oh. travel trailer. Oh. And we traveled for 20 years, and we went to every state in the United States. Have you been to Palm Springs here before? Yes. Mm -hmm. When did you first come here? Let's see, it was what year was You know. Yeah. We went around California and up the coast from California. And uh -huh. But several years ago then. Yeah. Okay. And um, you f did Matt contact you to, yeah, about the, that we he had did. the... He called me and told me, he said, what museum it, it was and that they had the plane. My husband flew. Yeah. And I was just flabbergasted. <laughs> and he gave me the history on it and... Uh, he wanted, he wanted some information, and I, he called me back, and he was wanting to know if I, how I, we could get the information to him, and I told him we'd bring it, we were coming to see him. <laughs> I'm glad you yeah. did. Now, Joe passed away in 2001, you said. Mm -hmm. Had he been sick for a while? Or? He had Alzheimer's. Oh. But, but up was, until that point, I mean, it sounded like he's a pretty healthy guy running he was, and everything. And he, was, he was very sweet to the day he died. Oh. He really was. That's a, a blessing, yeah. yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we'll wrap this part of it up and then go kind of around the plane. But before we do, any parting thoughts from either of you? Well, Matt asked questions that we didn't have the wisdom to ask at the time. Uh, it's one of those situations where when he was around to give us answers, we didn't know to ask them. Mm -hmm. And so we've been putting together clues. And mm -hmm. between um, my dad's photographs of being in the Aleutians, you know, which were three by two inches, 
we did high resolution images of them. We could see things we had never seen before, um, uh, including the the squad number and all of these different mm -hmm. interesting things. Plus things in the background, uh, the turret and the the guns within it, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, he is amazingly thorough. And it's encouraged us, and of course, mother got really excited about it. So we said, "All right, let's well, let's, let's oh, get let's with go. this. <laughs> you know, let's do what it takes." And uh, we found a lot of, of information that it'll be good for the grands to know Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yes. Really is. Okay. What are you thinking of, mom? What oh, else? I, I can't add to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. All right, well, let's wrap this part of it up, and then we'll kind of go around the plane and maybe go inside. That's how the Army uses MBAs. Well, we've been in the ski, I'll tell you. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> but not a one of them got, got hurt at all, did well, they? Using your, give him your best line. Well, no, I'm not going to say that, because he may be a Vietnam man with that by myself. No, the biting strength. Well, yeah, we conserve the biting strength of the U.S. Army. You probably know this. <laughs> I was in the Navy, Navy dentist. Um, okay, I'm looking back kind of at the tail. Uh, let's, uh, Mary Beth, why don't you, well, yeah, you guys come on over here. Yeah. Uh, now, okay, we got the tail, back, the stabilizer and stuff. Uh, up here we have um, these blisters on yes. either side and one's open. Do you know who, who, what they were for or who was in those? There were guns mounted there. were gu gun mounts in there. Yes, okay. yes. Do we mem know how many crew members they normally had on this? Uh, eight. And three Sounds officers. probably. Three, three officers. officers and five crewmen. Crewmen, uh -huh. okay. Right. There was yeah. a navigator, yeah. uh, a couple of pilots. They, they I'll, took I'll, turns. I'll, I'll, let me I'll hold The three it. pilots took turns to navigate. Uh-huh. 12 hour. Wow. 12 hour. Yeah. And they had twin uh, engines. Do we know what kind of engines they had? Those are Pratt and Whitney. Pratt and Whitney radios, yeah. I would get on your board area. Oh, okay. Well, that's. <laughs> when all else fails, read the instructions, right? <laughs> and who sat up there, Chris? What was the, the person that sat up there? there? I don't know. I love their bubble. Yes, there was a seat up there, and they were. Some kind of spotter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then it had uh, pontoons on here. So that's what that's we right. call an amphibian, because mm -hmm. it could go on either water it could or. Take off and land on water. Yeah, but it can also go up on the land. In this could particular land on land plane, well. Matt was telling us, um, after the war, uh, was part of the Aleutian Airlines uh, as an aircraft, and they put oh. um, seats in there, and uh, they would carry 22 passengers. Yes, 22 oh, people see. in yeah. there, uh -huh. and then after that, for it, Alaskan Airways. Yes, uh -huh. thank you, thank you. And then uh, after that, uh, they were able to, if it, the aircraft could could swoop down and hover. Uh, above water and suck water into the plane and would do for uh, mixed with fl fire retardant oh. mm -hmm. would uh, help during uh, for out fires, fires yeah. exactly oh. Oh, and but it's, it's he said it was fire. very unusual for this vintage of aircraft uh, to still be in service and use yeah it's, uh, Oh yeah? Because it just it was, it was cruising speed was just nine oh. miles an hour. <laughs> and when the flax started yeah. growing around him, we yeah. were trying to get out away from it. And that's when Joe realized that how that name fit. <laughs> yeah. Let's go over to the very front of the plane. I'm, and Joe, if you could yeah, there you go. Or maybe just there you go. Good job, good job. Yeah. And that was carefully researched. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. It, Under the, under the wing. Uh, they were far. Uh, they, there were sirens and loudspeakers for warning people off a lake when they picked up water off of a lake. Oh. When they swooped down on the lake to get water for, for the firefighter. Yeah. So that was from. Oh yeah, I see. Later, that. later use yeah, of the plane. Uh huh. Right. And huh. also, these engines are, are different than the original head when Joe flew it too. These oh. are more powerful engines. I see. Yeah. Because it was doing this firefighting. Uh -huh. But because it was amphibious, they could swoop down, suck up water, uh, spread it as needed for fire retardant 15 times an hour as oh. opposed to if they had to land oh, yeah. uh, at a base, mm -hmm. fill up, and take off again. It was only four or five times an yeah. hour. So that was kind of an in interesting after. Okay, I'm going to see if I can go inside the plane now, I think. Yeah, tell, tell me anything about the, uh, well, what, the pilot's compartment up there. Well, what amazed me about it was it was so, it looked so cramped, it was so small, yeah. and they had so many crew members. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matt was telling us how they'd been uh, re, uh, reworking the aircraft to where it would be uh, more like it was in its period of significance mm -hmm. during the war. The, uh, but uh, it's amazing how, how cramped these things were. Yeah. And we think uh, airliner today is uncomfortable. Man, <laughs> this thing really was. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Now they've got 22 passengers in here, I'll never know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Huh. Chris, tell uh, about the butane cook stove. <laughs> yeah, this area was the where the navigator sat. Uh -huh. And they had a had a navigator's table out here and a, a butane stove for cooking meals because their their missions were so long. Oh yeah. And they had a heater in the aircraft because obviously they were in very cold climate. And right. They had too. Yeah. yeah. Matt was telling us that this section here was where they had the the uh, the uh, water tanks and the fire retardant mm -hmm. chemicals and back when they were. Using this aircraft for fire firefighting, yeah. I'll tell you what. Let's go back. I think you can get in through the tail back. Yes, section. you can go straight back there. Yeah. Let's go down. Well, we could. Go ahead. I'll well, go we'll go. Forward, we'll forward. go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah, come on in. I guess this is the. The These gun, are the, the guns. machine gunner, machine guns were. were and, uh, they had a uh, magazine rounds, keeping the. I think they had 50 caliber. I machine think guns I think they probably did. Yeah. Yeah. I think. yeah. <laughs> well, what uh, what amazed the family was the the workmanship that the museum is doing and, and getting this aircraft back into shape and the yeah. work that Matt Boyd's done with his his group of. Of, I guess some volunteers. They all volunteers. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing what they do. Yeah. yeah, it really is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, and the what we thought also was interesting was the the interest that you guys have brought with from the family, mm -hmm. from Mary and 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 Mary Beth, her daughter, about you know the interest in and in, in, we call it Papa Joe's impact yeah. sure. of, of, of fighting the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, his, 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 his part of the war was very small, but it was important. It's really significant. And you guys have certainly shown us how. Well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that, that that's what, and it's, it's special for his wife, too, I think, and, you know, we, when we do these interviews, I think it's sometimes almost as important to get the viewpoint of the people here at home and what they were going through right. while their loved one was away and not right, sure exactly. they're coming back and stuff, yeah. yeah. It's uh, a unique time where everyone pulled together and uh, right. yeah. 
Well, since Mary Beth and I both were born, because of this period of time, you know, my father's story is pretty much the same as, as Joe's story. You know, he, he enlisted in the, in the Army and went off to Europe, where his, her father went off to, off to the Navy right. to, to the Aleutians. And, uh, sure. But we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for the war and, and the prosperity after the war mm -hmm. that the uh, United States oh, yeah. achieved. Yeah. Yeah.